thanks for coming out. Uh, I know it was probably difficult right after some Halloween evenings. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the vocabulary of new space. I work for Armadillo Aerospace and have friends at a variety of other companies, so um, it tends to be a field full of, you know, witticisms and sort of euphemisms for when things go wrong, which they often do. So, uh, do you think it's going to go automatic or? Uh, I guess I, I'll just do it. All right, so one of the classics is sort of dino space versus new space. New space are supposedly mammals kind of thing. And it's this idea that we evolve whereas they get wiped out. It's, it's not the greatest comparison all the time because, you know, dinosaurs are awesome. But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing is just that, you know, there were, you know, a, a few hundred million years when mammals were getting stepped on dinosaurs, so it doesn't necessarily say a good thing about us. But uh, uh, the standard new space time interval is two years. Anytime you need a new capability, it will be ready in two years. So we will be flying to space in two years, or we will, you know, be able to get our moon base running in two years. I've heard that actually at SpaceX, it's two weeks, which shows how much faster they go. And uh, you can contrast it versus uh, nuclear fusion, uh, creating energy from, which has consistently been 20 years. So at least we're 10 times faster than fusion research. Uh, sort of disdainful terms for uh, things that uh, you know, it's very easy to make a, a rocket work on paper. Paper, so there are paper rockets um, and also colorful fluid drawings is another term for uh, computational fluid dynamics uh, where if you don't do it right it's easy to make things that are very pretty and have no meaning whatsoever so uh, you know, PowerPoint engines uh, Paul Reed talks about you know on paper rockets the uh, the plumbing never leaks uh, which is not ever the case in real rockets High power rocketry has another whole set. I didn't even do all of them, but there's all kinds of like separation is when it breaks in half. A land shark is when it takes off and goes scooting across the ground. A crowd pleaser is basically anytime anything goes wrong in a dramatic and interesting way. Like, <laughs> it's just like going to NASCAR. People go for the crashes, you know. Uh, sky riding is doing this where the rocket goes up and then just goes flying around and uh, exceeding the speed of balsa is, you know, if, if just the rocket goes too fast and explodes kind of thing. So. Uh, we also, it's an industry full of magical materials. Uh, well before Pandora, we were all talking about unobtainium. You know, if your uh, Inconel nozzle is not withstanding the heat, then you just need to make it out of wish alloy and sprinkle some pixie dust on there. Uh, some, uh, some of the specific like propellants have their own terminologies. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer. Uh, one of the catalysts for decomposing it is uh, potassium permanganate, and it, it just it stains everything purple. It is essentially a purple dye, so it's called the purple menace. You know, once you use it, you know you will never not be purple again. Uh, the the pine cone test is one that uh, ERPS up in San Francisco did, where you dump peroxide on a pine cone and it bursts into flame, just as a demonstration of sort of the safety issues of it. And Mojave Universal Catalyst is dirt. Uh, uh, the dirt in Mojave will catalyze peroxide quite well, so anytime you want to get rid of peroxide, you just dump it on the ground and it makes, you know, foamy mud, basically, so. Uh, just as the, uh, the, the plumbing systems of a rocket carry the propellant, you know, from the tanks to the, uh, to the engine, the uh, electronics are carrying the magic smoke through the system, and once you let the magic smoke out of the electrical system, then it never works again. Uh, a Heisen bug is, is a bug that only exists until you go looking for it and then it disappears, which, yeah, and th these are terms from, you know, more from software side, and automagically is just when something is supposed to happen that you haven't tested very well, so it's like, and then automagically the parachutes will come out, so. Uh, also, when you get a bunch of rocket people and you start getting them to do financial stuff as well, then they will take rocketry terms and cram them into financial stuff. So IIP is instantaneous impact point. It's the rocket is right here, and if I shut off the engine, where is the rocket going to fall? And we use that in like FAA evaluations of stuff. FIIP is the financial instantaneous impact point. At the current funding level, if we don't get any more investors, where is the company going to fall? Uh, ISP is specific impulse. It's how much you know how much performance you get out of a quantity of fuel. I dollar sign P is. Uh, uh, impulse per dollar, how much you know, how much thrust you get for the money that you have, kind of thing. Uh, a classic <laughs> of the software world is we'll fix it in software, uh, which it, uh, it, to some degree is actually used. Uh, like they'll, uh, you'll be doing a project and it'll, um, you know, like they often NASA will even launch stuff to other planets and uh, while on the flight there they will actually be programming it and figuring out what it's going to do once it lands. But it's also used jokingly in like, uh, well, the plumbing just broke off. Ah, we'll fix it in software. <laughs> uh, 
related in the software stuff is it's just a small change and what could possibly go wrong. if you ever hear someone, if you're working on a rocket project and they say what could possibly go wrong, that is your sign to run away as fast as you possibly can which related is the base explosion, which this is from Robot Chicken. One of my, Ian Garcia at the company I used to work at, he is a big fan of Robot Chicken and so it started to infect all of our stuff and it's now spread further. So anytime something goes wrong, it's a base explosion. And there are a variety of different terms for base explosions, like Cato, which is catastrophic. Rapid unplanned disassembly is a great euphemism. Or spontaneous disassembly or a static launch. This is a, you know, a test from far when it's supposed to go somewhere and it's, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, successful test of the fire suppression system. So in rocket engines, there are similar ones too. Uh, you know, if it's supposed to be a liquid fueled engine and then you go into hardware rich combustion, it means that, that your engine is melting and is now contributing. Uh, in, in copper engines, when copper burns, it goes, goes green. So when the engine's working normally, it shouldn't have like a red or a yellow or an orange plume. And if it suddenly go, goes green, it means that something is being eaten that isn't that shouldn't be. So, and if you have a liquid engine and it turns into a hybrid, that's also usually a bad sign. Uh, the general terminology in liquid engines, when uh, when you have a, uh, it's possible to get propellant into the engine and then light it, and it'll go bang, and sometimes it'll blow up the engine, and that's called a hard start, which is euphemism in itself. And then if you work for, there are a couple companies who don't like to acknowledge that they occasionally have hard starts, so they call them firm starts, so it's essentially a euphemism on top of a euphemism. Uh, Tragic loss of vehicle is one that John Carmack came up with. Is that essentially every new space company at some point will lose a vehicle, uh, which is you know obviously a bad thing, but it is you know really one of the things that uh, uh, gives you an idea of how the company will perform is how they you know what they do after they lose a vehicle. This is, a, I think, a delta exploding. Uh, also, many terms for when the rocket, uh, yeah, has a conversation with the ground. Uh, litho braking is the free deceleration provided by impact with the dirt. Kind of thing. Uh, a lot of the high power stuff will launch on lakes, and if you come down fast, you can actually like stick it back into the ground on a lake. And so there are all kinds of uh, a fishing orbit. Orbital Sciences has had uh, some luck with that recently, launching stuff south and you know and landing uh, slightly uh, lower altitude than they hoped for. Uh, and then in, you know the the rockets that take off that don't you know they don't really have pilots. So everyone on board, you know, if you want to be nice, they're astronauts. If they're commercial, they're spaceflight participants. And if you're being, you know, a bit literal about it, they're biological cargo. And if if you are not that impressed with them, then they are the meat in the seat. Uh, so. Uh, so there is also a progression of problems. Uh, it starts with off nominal, which can just mean you know pretty much anything in a test. But by the time you get to accident, it means that probably something went really really wrong. Uh, the obituary test is uh, a, a classic from New Space, uh, which is Henry Spencer uh, uh, defined. Essentially, you uh, no matter what the odds of something are, if if you if you're doing something like you know. Uh, something that's not a very good idea. If in your and it kills you, like if something goes really wrong, just by sheer odds. Um, and then in your obituary, uh, the question is, will your obituary say, "Well, this guy was a dumbass. Why the hell was he doing that?" Or will it say, "Well, no one would have possibly seen that coming." If, if at any point you find yourself doing something and it, if it killed you, um, that you would posthumously feel like a dumbass for it, then you probably <laughs> shouldn't be doing it. So. Um, so I guess the, the crux of what I was getting at is that uh, many of you will end up being in the space industry and using some of these terms. Uh, I would ask you to, you know, euphemism well. Uh, on the one hand, there's, you know, some of these terms are terms of art and we use them and it, it is informative and sometimes they're entertaining, but the, the downside is that people will use them to cover their ass basically or hide the truth. And anytime you find yourself, you know, trying to come up with new terms to really hide the truth from yourself or your boss or, or the public, then, uh, you know, it is your jobs as, as, as space people to be honest with what you're doing. It is obviously difficult. It is rocket science. Uh, so, uh, and that was pretty much all I had. Thank you.